Welcome back to the Healthy Business Podcast. I am Ty King with American Business Engine. I am coming from a marketing standpoint, and with me is... Jessica Tolliver. I'm with Cam Collaborative. I'm coming from a healthcare standpoint. There you go. So Jessica thought it would be a great idea if we sort of introduce ourselves and like the companies we work with so that you have an idea of like what viewpoint we're coming from, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, so it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Healthy. Friday. Yeah. It is, yeah, it's Friday. It's, what, t- Tuesday for them? Uh, yeah, t- it'll, it'll be Tuesday, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely, Tuesday for them. So, uh, does Friday actually mean something for you? No, actually, I usually work Saturday, so yeah. it's not really a That's day, but yeah. other people seem to get joy when I say that. They do, and I don't, I mean, I don't understand why. I guess well, it comes with, don't. yeah, right. The 9 to 5 It do. comes, it's, it's, <laughs> It's one of the, uh, I guess, the benefits of working for somebody else mm-hmm. is that you have weekends unless they call you in and tell you, hey, you're working overtime, that type of thing. So, yeah, completely understand that. <laughs> so, oh. What's on our topic today? Topic today. So I think we hit on it last week, mm-hmm. but I wanted to just go ahead and, and dive right into it because it seemed like that there were, you had a lot more to say on this subject. Company culture. Company culture. Right? So we started talking about... What do you wear as a business owner uh, and as a professional going into certain situations? But then we talked about the workplace. And if you have employees, what is expected? And we're talking about dress code and that type of thing. But also, it splits off into company culture. What is your company culture? So if you were to explain what company culture is, what would you say? Just in your own Uh, words. I would say it's the vibe of the office. And I realize that's not a great descriptive word, yeah. but it kind of is because what is that employee going to feel mm-hmm. when they walk in? And the reason it's important is because the new generation of employees value their how they feel yeah. more than they value the paycheck. I mean, the paycheck's important, don't get me wrong, but I've heard talk to people who will actually not take jobs or quit jobs because they didn't get a long enough lunch break or they... Didn't, couldn't take their dog to work or whatever their, whatever was important to them that wasn't necessarily associated with the job, people were valuing that. Yeah, for sure. So, the vibe. The vibe. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way to put it. <laughs> um, and so, I guess, you know, how do you, how do you find your, your company culture, you develop that? That's, uh, well, you have there. to get an idea of what you want and you have to think about who you're work, who's working for you. Yeah. You, you, you can be uh, just a staunch, upright, person, but if you own a, a marketing firm, you're going to be hiring creatives. So you have sure. to think about the culture that's going to satisfy those creatives in their workplace so that they're happy at work, so that they work. Right. Um, and so, so it, it's less about you, and I think that's what a lot of business owners do is they think, well, what do I want? I'm not my target audience. Yeah. yeah I know that. Right. And if I just did everything only things I liked, I wouldn't be appealing to my, my employees or my clients. Same here, same here, yeah. <laughs> like, even when it comes down to, like, uh, like editing videos and, and putting those up or, like, little promotional things to put, it's like, I look, I like, you know, punk pop type music, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But that doesn't necessarily translate to, because <laughs> right? most people that are listening to that are not business people, so they're not my clients, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's just like, okay, I enjoy listening to this, but they won't, you know, right. so it's, yeah, that type of thing. Um, and I'm sure like, I don't know when, like, I've never hired anybody for my company mm-hmm. Any of the companies I've owned. I've never hired. I never got to that point. I'm close, but I have brought in people that were, you know, 1099s, uh, subcontracts. And even then, you know, I've kept it in my mind of like, okay, company culture, how you're treating these people is how they're going to treat the job that they're doing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And so I always try to make them feel comfortable, get to know them. Um, and not just like on a, you know, surface level type of, you know, uh, where they can tell, okay, you're just faking this just to try to make me feel better about it. But like actually getting to know them and like, what are, what are you trying to strive for? What are you, what are your dreams? What are your goals and stuff? Well, that also helps you hire a better employee. Yeah. And you can have an employee that it, if you have two people side by side mm-hmm. and they are equally trained and equally knowledgeable and, and equal in every way, which you know, is yeah. impossible, but just say they were. And one person is more of a chill, kind of laid back, quiet person. The other person is loud. Those, both those people aren't equally going to fit in your in your, in your company culture, yeah. unless you have like offices. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and I've gone the opposite way. So, well, I mean, well, it was keeping in tone of like, what is the culture? What do I want people to do? I want them to be inspired. I want them to 
feel welcome and like I'm helping them reach their goals, that type of thing. On the other hand, uh, so I had one job uh, for a t-shirt company. We, so I was building the website and this other guy that was having, I was having to work with on that was creating the, uh, the mock-ups of the t-shirts and that type of stuff to put online. Dragging his feet. I mean, it was just weeks and weeks and weeks. But he kept posting about how he was, you know, harvesting honey from his beehives and going out and fishing and all this stuff. And so I finally called him. I was like, dude, I don't care how much honey you've harvested. I don't care if you want to go and, you know, spend weeks out in the woods. I don't care, you know. I was like, but we need this job done. And, like, it made, it made him so angry. Like, he went off. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> he ended up quitting, you know what I mean, because of that. But I was like, we paid you to do a job. Do the job. You know what I mean? It's nice that you have your last little hobbies on the mm-hmm. side, but don't take the money and try to run. Uh, actually, get the work done. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, there's way more to this. And so it's very unprofessional. And, of course, he's one of those marketers that was like, you know, I've, <laughs> I've built websites for Nabisco and da 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 No, and it's a, it's a lie. You know what I mean? You know, all these people are just trying Nabisco to get the... the oh, Nabisco <laughs> with the K. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, that was that was one situation I ran into. But, yeah, like keeping it was like, okay, yeah, I'm all about building you up and helping you reach your goals and all that stuff. But if you're not putting the work in, I am going to call you out. Yeah, the, expe- well, the expectation needs to be out there. I expect yeah. you to meet deadlines. I expect you to do this. But if you want to do it with those shoes on, okay. Yeah. If that's if that's your culture, I walk in. I'm like Mr. Rogers. The first thing I do is change my shoes, and and I change into yoga shoes, so they're not really shoes. That's right. Like yeah. Pretend shoes, but I, I and every event that happens here, and mm-hmm. even if I'm speaking and and hosting an event as yeah. a professional as a job owner, I'm still walking up there with my shoes on, because sure. that's how I'm comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and I think you know, whenever you figure out whatever it is your culture is, and like getting, I guess. It's a process of trying to figure out, okay, well, first of all, what are our values? You know, get a, get a list of five or six values that you think your company is. What you want to uphold. Um, so when you're going through entrepreneurial classes, they always recommend that you uh, come up with a mission statement mm-hmm. and a vision statement. Mm-hmm. And so all of your employees should be able to spout that off right off the bat, which means keep it short, keep it to the point, and make it realistic. Mm-hmm. So... As long as they know that and they're living by that and you're providing an environment where it actually presents that and gets them excited and makes them feel like they have a stake in what they're doing, mm-hmm. then you're going to have a great company culture. You brought up a really interesting point that I've known business owners who have done that. They have tried to do all the things, mm-hmm. but it was one-sided. And they kept doing, they kept end implementing new things to inspire the employees, but at the same time, he would turn around and go back into that old mindset of the old management and then treat people like that when he wasn't doing the little buzzy thing. So he had celebrated one person's birthday by decorating a cubicle. Yeah, okay. But that was the only time he ever did it, like one person. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and there was like 15 people, 17 employees. Okay. So it's, you could tell, to your point, you could tell that yeah. he was doing it because he read it in a book. He wasn't doing it because yeah. he really felt behind that. And seeing that from like, a, you know, if I was another employee there, and I wasn't the one that had the birthday cubicle, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, I showing, this last week, dude. <laughs> showing favoritism to this one employee, it creates dissent, people are talking behind your back, it just creates this situation that never really was what you know what it looks like, mm-hmm. but it's just them trying to... They've actually done research do studies um, on people and asked them, and this is very recent, I actually did this research probably about a year ago, uh, that they were in, in, in the employees and finding out what's important to them. And historically, it's been money, security, blah. Uh, your average employee today, or your average worker today, is going to spend an average of two, uh, two years in the job. Okay. And that is crazy considering it used to be 20. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so you have to figure out what kind of employee you want, get attract them in there, and then keep them as happy as you can because they're likely going to get bored in two years. Yeah. Well, that's the average. Too. Some say less, some say more. Right. I guess it obviously depends on the, I guess how long your business has been around, that type of thing, like how many, how many, how much work you're getting, and then also the industry that you're in, yeah. that type of thing. Well, that are, and they all, you've also heard people talk about how that people value experiences more than monetary things. Oh yeah, that you yeah. Can buy. That's another thing about company culture is, is that experience. Yeah. One of the things I did for a while is we provided chair massages to employees at businesses. We could actually come on site, COVID killed us. 
you come on site <laughs> and give employees a 10, 15 minute massage yeah. just to help you know, at least once a week, once a month, depending on the, the, the company. But they did those little things because for them, it cost 10 bucks a person. Yeah. But for that employee, he gets to look forward to that massage each week. It keeps them engaged. Sure. So the defining things like that that your employees will utilize <clears throat> I was sent out to another business that had, was mostly men who were in more of a blue collar type job. No one wanted to be touched. Hmm. So that same incentive isn't going to work for everybody. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and so, I, you know, I think when you're focusing on what is my company culture, what I want it to be, and so like it ultimately becomes part of your onboarding process too. Mm-hmm, exactly. So when you're hiring on employees, you you they have to have something they can read and you've got to go over this like hey this is how we work here mm-hmm. this is what we do and you know try to get the try to get a match you know what i mean if they might have the talents that you're looking for but they may not have the the personality or the same you know mm-hmm. vibe let's go with vibe so they don't have the vibe to fix you, that fits your vibe exactly you, know, so. you have to be able to have someone who can handle we had this conversation right before we started recording Someone who can handle the way you speak. Yes. And as a business owner, you should work on that. Yeah. You know, it's my problem. I should work on it. I need to be better with my clients and my employees and all those things. But at the same time, it helps if you go ahead and hire the people that can yeah. handle it. And if you are a gruff speaker and you hire someone who every time someone says they get something they think it's their fault, you're going to have a very unhappy, sad little employee in the corner who probably yeah. won't last very long or be very productive. So to both points, what do I want my company culture to be and who can handle me? Really? Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> I think you and your uh, what is Lena's role? She she's the secretary. She's uh she's my, her title is executive assistant. Executive assistant. Okay. And she's my everything. Okay. Yes. She, exactly. She does. As I was saying, what is her actual role? But anyways, so I think you guys have a great relationship. Mm-hmm. Like I'm seeing you guys interact and like how how it is here. And you, she understands you talk the way you do. And she's kind of the same type of person. She's like, I just want to cut through it and then we'll also be creative. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to find, you know, five different paths that we could take and choose the best one, and then we're going to take that. Mm-hmm. And so that's pretty interesting how you guys do that. Um, I've had, you know, the opposite experience at another business I own where we had a secretary, and the, the she, man, the communication was, was terrible. Uh, and so, like, I understand because I'm, I'm personally an introvert, and so this person was also an introvert. But I'm the type of introvert where I have put myself out on stage, just threw myself out there, forcing myself to come out of my shell and to talk to people. She is not. So she was the type that like kept everything close to herself and uh, you know, so like never knew when she was supposed to be on task for doing something else because she would finish a task and then not tell me she was done so that she could get to the next thing. And so created miscommunication, lots of downtime, lots of missed opportunities uh, for where we can buy, well, if you're not doing this, then you can send out emails to people and let them know about the new things that we're doing or this service or ask them how, ask this client how they're doing. But she um, may have been coming from a previous employer who was a micromanager and wanted yeah. to sit there and wait sure. to be micromanaged through her process, right. which is fine if yes, that's, that's your company culture. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So like for, for that culture, you know, it, it wasn't matching up to mine. So, so that's what she's used to. Um, coming from working at a college, right? Uh, and so we butted heads a lot because it was just a completely different. Because I'm the type where I'm like, if you come and work with me or work for me, then I want you to forget everything that you know before. I want you to forget it all. Just wipe it from your memory. We're starting over fresh, you know? And so that's why I like, I like, I prefer to get people that are, you know, first starting in that position with me if that makes any sense mm-hmm, so absolutely. like if it's a marketer Thanks, if it's a graphic designer if it's you know somebody i don't want them to have uh, worked at another big no you want them to have marketing been company a basket weaver or yeah. something yeah. else yeah because a lot of like the marketing companies or like any of the media companies that uh, period um they're notorious notorious and like i don't know if you you probably don't keep up with this stuff but i I'm a big video game nerd, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I do keep up with the behind the scenes, you know, inside baseball type stuff of like, what are the, what are the companies doing? So many of the huge billion dollar companies that are building games right now, so many of them are under serious hot water uh, for what they call grind. Grind is we have this game that's gonna be coming out in three months. We've been working on this for five years, but now we've got three months until the launch date. For this three months, 
we're going to force you to sit in your office. You're not taking lunch breaks. You're staying late after hours. You're coming in on weekends. I mean, it's just working them to absolute death until like their mental health is just like deteriorated. Um, a lot of these companies are getting sued over this right now. Blizzard is one of the main ones. Uh, they make the World of Warcraft, a whole bunch of other games like that. So, but like they, uh, they were under so so much stress, and they also had a lot of HR problems with uh, what they call frat boy mentality with the staff, the mm-hmm. people that were higher ups that were harassing women just for being women. Mm-hmm. You know, working in a male dominated industry type of thing. Um, they were called out on that, being sued for that, and then eventually, like this billion-dollar company, the CEO was uh, told to step down, and a lot of the other people were fired. And Xbox themselves bought the company so that they could refigure it. So, I mean, it's just to me, it's just a lesson of looking at things like that, where it's like stuff that you commonly see in any store. You walk through Walmart or uh, Target or you know, a GameStop or whatever, and you see the, the games, the product that they created. But the story behind them and the, the, the multiple, multiple million dollar or even billion dollar companies that are behind this, like knowing what the culture is, uh, how are the employees being treated? And you don't really think about that, like for any product that you pass by, you know, you're like, okay, do I need this or do I not want this, you know? Um, but the companies behind it, each one of them has a company culture and we may not even hear the full story until years later when somebody steps out, you know, kind of like the Me Too movement, you know, or they would step out and be like, while I was there, like they were, you know, mentally abusing us, they were harassing us and blackmailing us and forcing us to you know, work way after for way less money. Um, and so like, yeah, it's it's gonna come back on you and like, it's the it's the rise or fall of your company, how you treat your employees mm-hmm. now. Like the name of the game has changed. Like well, I said, and, and I mean, like I said, a lot of the legal stuff, I'm not talking about that, but the okay. extra hours and then that three months, uh-huh. If you talk to that to accountants, especially at the big firms, mm-hmm. they get to do their jobs and keep to the things, and then but then come crunch time, January to April, like they don't get to go home. Yeah. But they know that going in, and they're fine with that because they know right. they're going in. Right. Like after tax season, then that's when you take your vacations and you get whatever extra, you get the extra days off, and they. So if you go, if you have those types of extreme working mm-hmm. conditions, because sometimes it's just necessary, you know, when you got to harvest or when you got to whatever the all hands on deck for that one little quarter or something, if your com- your employees don't want up front and they agree to that, then that's fine. But right. you have to make sure that you offset it with incentives on the off time. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And making sure that you're, you're, like I said, company culture. So you can't just, <laughs> so you, you can decide what your company culture is going to be, but you can't decide that your company culture is going to be bad. And expect to be successful. <laughs> yeah. Right? So one thing that you can do as an employer, and this isn't going to be great for every situation or every every company, but you can have them take a personality test. Yeah. And the personality test, because it's not based on how smart you are or whatever field you're in, it's about how you communicate. Mm-hmm. And then you can look at that person and go, are we going to butt heads? Right. Or is, is that good for the job? So you want someone who's very detail-oriented in your accounting position. Yeah. But that same person is not going to thrive in sales. So being able to understand on paper what their enneagram or whatever, sure. what their communication style is and how they're going to take things can help you kind of, I don't know, figure yeah. out that company culture. Not for sure. And I've seen even, uh, when you said that, maybe think of it, but like some of the people on, on LinkedIn on their profile, mm-hmm. you know, you have your little descriptive part underneath your name. Some people include like their uh, EDJC or whatever, you know what I mean, uh, from the... What is it called? Yeah. Briggs? Oh, Briggs and Myers. Briggs Myers, yes, from the Briggs Myers uh, test, and so your personality test, and so they'll put their their numbers, their letters, letters. there. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's, those were letters. Well, there's oh, a lot. You don't have to suck into that one. There's a lot of them, and they're all all are, are good in their own way. Yeah. Pick one. There's a lot of free ones online. You oh yeah, get, sure. You yep, can just do awesome. something like that, and let's just get a way to. It might just be you. a green or a blue, or okay. <laughs> it's a color or a or number a, or a letter. Or, or, an animal. Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've done the animal one too. Mm-hmm. I was like uh, Gary Smalley, I think it was. That was like that. I was like, you're either a beaver or a golden retriever, and all that. <laughs> we, I, mean, I don't know. I've been through all those classes. And it's been... But so that, that's just one way that you can help farm your culture to yeah. push it in the direction that you want it to be. And also, it's a good tool to find a good employee because you want that detail-oriented person over in accounting. Yeah. And you want to make sure that your salesperson doesn't mind making phone calls. Sure. 
<laughs> and for the, I guess, the administration, the, the higher-ups, treating your employees like they're humans mm -hmm. and being kind to them, being understanding. Which circles back to where we started, which yes. is they have to be happy in their job. Used to be yes. you had to pay them enough. Now, you have, they have to be happy oh, in their yeah. job. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Having an employee these days is a, it's a privilege. You know, it's not it's not a guarantee anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many people that are looking for staff and trying to hire up, but they can't keep anybody. And it's because, well, it, you're, what you're offering is not good enough. Then uh, well, that's not better than than sitting in my pajamas in my home. You know what I mean? Working well, on my computer. And a lot of people are thinking that a lot of business owners, coming from old school, because everything's changed really fast. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons I'm oh, so happy we're yeah. doing this podcast because then in real time we can talk about how things are changing. It's not always about the dollar. Yeah. I mean, you can you, you can't keep throwing money at people and expect to get good employees. Sure. You have to make your culture fit your employee and then want to work. Right, for sure. And I'm not uh, I'm not one of the millennials that slams boomers just for being boomers. You know what I mean? But like, I wonder how hard it is for them. You know, like you said, used to uh, the you know length of your employment at a company 20, 30, 40, you retire from that job. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Some people started off at a, at a certain factory ended up retiring from the same company, mm -hmm. you know, by the end. Um, like for them, like as, as fast as everything has been changing, like I wonder what it's like for them that are still in the, you know. So the business owners world. that are in that position are yeah. struggling because yeah. they don't understand. Yeah. The ones that are smart are in attracting some younger talent to help them understand mm -hmm. and to help them bridge that gap between this 20 year retirement mentality and I'm here for the summer or I'm here for two years or I'm here until I find something better or I decide I want to go become a butterfly. Yeah. You know, people are into making themselves a self-care industry. People are caring for themselves, are getting massages, are they're spending more on their, their, their health and wellness than ever before. Right. Because they want to be happy. Yeah. Like before, it didn't matter. You didn't have to be happy. Isn't it crazy that Do we're just now getting that point, right? right? <laughs> before, I mean, I guess it comes from like times of like the the Great Depression, mm -hmm. you know, where it was like, man, jobs were scarce mm -hmm. and people were doing anything they could to make a dollar just to survive and pay, you know, help their families, and mm -hmm. then like it just carried on for decades, you know, like the we we there's still some residual, you know, effects from that time mm -hmm. now today. So, actually, this is a little off topic, but. They actually found that someone who suffered a trauma in, say, the Great Depression okay. passes some of that uh, mentality via right. cells onto yeah. the children genetically. Oh, yeah. Like, they don't, even, they, they don't have to raise the child for the child to have that. So we are just now starting to get rid of a lot of that anxiety genetically. Yeah. In our, in, in, from our great-great-grandparents that had all these traumas, and that's one of the reasons we're having that shift back. To a more, I want to be happy. I want to enjoy life. I want to. Right. I don't want to work myself to the bone mentality. Yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, you reminded me of something. You know, I just thought of recently was how, uh, like, if your parents were in the Great Depression uh, or grandparents, whatever it was, uh, they taught their kids like even the eating habits, right? Mm -hmm. So clear plate. Exactly. Clear your plate. Put as much food as you can on the plate and clear your entire plate. Mm -hmm. Make a happy plate. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, that carries down until it's like their grandkids are, like, doing it and they're not really realizing why they're doing it. You know what I mean? And then we're having, like, obesity problems in America. And, of course, That's, more just clear your plate. that's yes. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's because we put a lot of junk in our food. We don't think about what we eat, which <laughs> is, like, eat as much as possible. But for them, it, it comes back to them because, like, they didn't know where the next meal was going to be. Exactly. And so do whatever they could to you know, provide food for their family and, and make no it waste. last. Yeah, and no waste to it whatsoever. And so like it carries on for you know generations past that. It's kinda of weird how mm -hmm. how we do that. It's like what else are we are we carrying around? Like it's a social norm. Like we don't even give it a second thought, but it comes from something that was like traumatizing, you know, many, many years ago for us. So I think I mentioned it before, but one of the books I read was it about Dave Robinson? Was uh, dealing with different diverse and difficult people. And what it focused on in one of the sections was age. When you're dealing with your boomer employee, you're going to have to behave differently than when you're dealing with your millennial employee. And even if they're doing the same job, it doesn't mean they can't both do that job. It just means that as an employer, you need to also think about how you're going to deal with that person based on where, where, how they were raised. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. 
I don't. Uh, <laughs> it's like I know I'm going to get there someday in hiring employees. I don't look. I don't look forward to it. I look forward to it in that I will have a lot more help. And I, I talked to somebody yesterday who, who was in the marketing field, and she was kind of doing the same thing. She had a very specific target market she was going after, right? So, uh, sort of middle-aged women that were sitting at home, not doing anything, and so, and so they started to build, you know, build a business on their own as a side gig, a, a side gig to momming, I guess, you know, uh, and then uh, helping them take off and find their brand identity and all that stuff. But she said she was like, she wasn't really looking for any other clients right now. She's actually having to subcontract out, and like, I could see, like, I, you know, I mean, as she was talking about it, and I was like, I feel that so much, where you're getting to where like you can only take so much on, and like eventually you're gonna have to hire. And it's going to be great because you're going to have somebody that can take some of that stress off your shoulders. But at the same time, you're taking on a whole new personality, person that you're going to have to manage and keep them on track. And you're going to have and to help work through their emotions. You have a, you are the, the, the bridge between their next meal. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You, have that, you now take on the responsibility of their family. Oh, yeah, for sure. Having employees is not uh, stress-free. No, no, not at all. Yeah, it's not there just to uh, take all the, the workload off your shoulders and then you have nothing to worry about except for, you know, taxes. It's it, There's a way more than that. It's, it's, it's a human connection and, like, there's a lot more uh, pressure and uh, responsibility, like you said, for, you know, you're not only taking care of this employee, but their family and uh, everyone that they're connected to and whatever they're trying to do in the future. It's like, are they always going to be with you? So like all this investment that you're putting into this employee, is it, is it gonna go, oh, are they gonna take it with them in a couple of months yep. and then you're having to start all over well, again? Been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I mean, I guess it's where you, you really start building in to future proof, I guess. That's another benefit of building out your company culture mm -hmm. and deciding what it's gonna be so that you can start. Well, I mean, those people, to the earlier point, leave in on an average of two years. Yeah. When they leave, if they leave on good terms, they're still gonna refer their friends to come to you. They're still gonna mm. be kind to your business. They're not leaving because they hate their job. They're right. leaving because they're bored or they found something better or they changed sure. their mind. People are changing not only changing jobs, we're changing careers at a record at alarming rate now. Oh record, yeah. Record rate. Because we can. Yeah, for sure. Like there's so, so many people I know that have uh Degrees and something completely different than what they, I mean, they're not marine biologists that are going into like massage therapy, but then it's like <laughs> <laughs> some of it has like, uh, okay, we have communication uh, degrees or I've got a degree in you know, something in, in medical. Like uh, my friend, he does sales for an IT company, but he has degrees in something in medical. I don't know what it was, but he worked in the ER for years and years and years, um, like at the, the, the surgical you know, operating table. And left that to become a sales rep for an IT company. Yeah, so, I mean. and it it's happening all the time. Yeah, not, and not even just like I'm going to become I'm a massage therapist. I'm going to become a nurse. I mean, that's kind of a, a path you can see, sure. or vice versa. But like you said, he was a ER nurse or whatever, <laughs> and he goes and decides he's going to be a salesman. Yeah, and yeah. That was a choice. Yeah. It wasn't. He wasn't forced into it. His business didn't close. There, you know, there's still sick people out there. But he made that choice because of very, I'm sure various reasons, but to do that, and you're going to see that in a lot of your employees as well. So that person that's your employee today that leaves in two years and goes and works for another company might be your sales rep or something else. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and so uh, there are you know, still quite a few companies that still have, they haven't updated their, um, their uh, not the interview, but like the application yeah. process for, yeah. for, the, for jobs. Where you have to have five years experience in this. I mean, well, a lot of people don't have that. And they're just switching over from something else that they were a professional in and they want a different type of career and then they're coming in. And they're going to be a valuable employee to you and like an asset to your company and help you grow. Uh, but you, you got to be able to, to look past uh, the, the old thoughts, I guess, mm -hmm. the, old, the old way of thinking of like, well, you had to have worked for several other people before you can work for me. Mm -hmm. So, well, back to the beginning, yeah. you'd prefer they didn't. Yeah, I prefer they didn't. Yeah, I prefer you didn't. I mean, having a job so that you know how that works, mm -hmm. like going to work on time and showing up and having expectations put on you. Mm -hmm. I enjoy that. Thank you. Yes, I'm glad that I don't have to do all the work. Right. But I don't want to have to retrain you in uh, how you're supposed to, you know, operate at work. Like the what programs you operate in. Or, yeah. Yeah, like even the programs that they're that they're working with. Oh, I know. Um, and 
like, okay, you've been trained to work on WordPress and bang your head against this and learn how to code for years and years and years. Well, I don't do that, okay? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a system I found that really, really works, and we have you know, a lot of clients that pay us your, money for this. Your system works? I'm yes. Like, this is actually kind of funny because I'm the person who's overstilled on WordPress. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to do it the way you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but doesn't mean it's better. No, so doesn't. to that point, that's why I formed out to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I understand. I understand that completely. But yeah, I uh, happen to, to retrain people and be like, mm -hmm. okay, well, this is how we've been. Well, I don't I, I realize don't, I don't that care. you have a, you got a yes. degree in 1982 from some great college. Yes, and, where you had to have the tickets and you actually punched in yeah. where they had to have code, you know what I mean? And then we moved to keyboards where you could, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. So that first, yeah, that person is, is they're struggling. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I always enjoy those conversations with people that started, you know, back when they like, oh, I was a programmer. I tell them I build websites now. And they're like, yeah, I was a programmer back in, I don't even know, like the 60s or whatever. And uh, they were telling me about like. Writing DOS. <laughs> yes, writing DOS, using the punch cards mm -hmm. that you actually had to stick in and it would notify. And then uh, like the t uh, they used to use, you know, like, you know, audio tape. Mm -hmm. They used to use tape for different types of code. It's a lot of like, it's, it's interesting. Oh, yeah. And like I'll I'll entertain it because like they they really just want to brag on like how tough things were back then, mm -hmm. but you know it's like they're not up to stuff now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like eh, I can appreciate that, you know. So hopefully, stay mentally flexible and continue to learn. Like we went over that before. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So. so. Otherwise, your culture's gonna die. Yeah, yeah. Or your <laughs> your, your company, you're gonna hit that level, that plateau, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna start sinking. Again. And so you have to be able to evolve. Like you said, everything's changing so quickly. If you think about cell phones uh, and how much they have evolved, period, uh, since like the early 2000s, and then now we're in 2021, and like, I mean, we have AR technology. We're in 2022. Really? Sorry. What year is it? What year are we in? Now you make me guess. What happened? <laughs> anyway, so we're in 2022 now, um, and we have... Uh, come so far well we have foldable screens they're not working out so well because people are getting creases in their phones and all that stuff that's a whole different thing but they suck so but anyway, we'll, we'll figure it out eventually you know uh, but like we went to touch screens pretty quickly right after you know the mainstream cell phones came on the Nokia phones and all that um, back in the early 2000s and we had the first iPhone and then everything was touch screen and it's like look where we are now to where like People can cheaply manufacture a touchscreen phone and, and get it out there to sell, you know, within a year. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing how far, you know, of a leap. And then COVID forced us all to use the internet way more and to use, uh, what, what is it? Zoom. Zoom. Yeah. Yes, Other Zoom. And delivery services for our groceries. And, I mean, so that was like a huge leap. And, and well, it's also on a mind shift because you you have things delivered from Amazon. You don't have things delivered from Kroger. Yeah. And now you have things delivered. You can go shop online yeah. and then hit a button and they'll, they'll charge your yeah. card and then stuff appears at your door. Yeah. <laughs> I love using my apps when I go to the gas station because I don't have to get out of the car to start the pump. I just bring up my app. I select the pump number and then it starts going. And then mm -hmm. I just plug it in, get Got it going. It. And so... Did not even know that was a thing. Yeah. Yes, he was downloading some apps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it helps me, and then I earn rewards off of doing that for using the app. So it's like, okay, so I'll do that, and then I'll go inside for my free coffee or whatever. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. I like watching those. You ever watch the, the React videos of like oh, the kids with the, the, the like sixteen year old kids, thirteen, mm -hmm. fourteen, and they'll hand them something like today, like a Palm Pilot. Mm -hmm. That was the one I showed my wife because I had to explain to her what a Palm Pilot was because she was like. So it's uh, digit it's like a phone, right? And I was like, no, you couldn't call anybody. And then it's like, okay, well, it's um, so so you can send emails. And I was like, well, you can write emails, but then you have to go back home, get on your dial-up modem, hook your <laughs> hook your Palm Pilot into that, and then offload your emails onto that, and then wait fifteen minutes for it to send out to everybody. Mm -hmm. She was like, oh my god, what was the point of this? So I was like, I don't know. I guess <laughs> so you didn't have to carry around paper. Because that's basically all you were doing you was just taking phone notes. Pilot, you yeah. have a phone, you have uh, a translator, you have yeah. <laughs> your pager. <laughs> but it's hilarious watching these kids. They'll hand them one of these things. They'll be like, okay, now I want you to write an email on this. They'll be like, what am I doing? I don't understand this at all, you know? And, I mean, they it came out in just a 
it's three or four years before they were even born. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that's like our technology has gone so far in the way we, the way we use it and uh, user interface is, is huge. So anyways, with technology, that's what I was getting back to. So with technology evolving, also the way that we're doing business is, is evolving what we're expecting out of employees, what we're expecting out of employers, mm-hmm. and how we're communicating with each other. Like most businesses have a Slack channel now mm-hmm. or where they can just you know have a direct stream of, of talking to each other. So if you don't know how that operates, then you're gonna have a tough time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I think that's where I was getting at. I don't know, I lost the point somewhere along the way and I was just started rambling. Company culture. Company culture, yeah, so uh, yeah. Keeping those, oh, that would be another thing. So company culture, if you do have an inner, Inner, uh, what do they call it? Inner communication between all the employees mm-hmm. and the employers and stuff, making sure that it stays professional, making sure, because that's what a lot of the game companies got in trouble for, sending inappropriate photos and stuff like that, harassment, and also keeping it reasonably within range of hours in the day. Because mm-hmm. uh, my wife has worked for people where they would continuously send messages on there all throughout the night asking, hey, did this get done? Did that, did that? It's like, I'm sleeping. It is 11 o'clock at night. I'm off the clock at you know 4 o'clock today. So why are you still sending me messages? So Well, I totally meant to turn, put your phone on silent. Because yeah. at 2 o'clock in the morning when my brain wakes up and I have yeah. nothing else to do, I'm going to remember everything. Yeah. But just ignore it. No, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, well, if you give a forewarning, you're like, here, I'm going to dump all this out onto the... the your messages or in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's back to company But expecting a response right then, oh. like that would not be appropriate. No. You'd be like, hey, it's 2 o'clock. I'm texting you. Why are you not up right now? There Answer was, my messages. There was a movie with Sandra Bullock and Hugh Grant, I think. Okay, sounds right. And, yeah, was, <laughs> all, of the, all of the 2000s. Yeah. yeah. And she was a personal assistant, and he was – the emergency, I need you to call me to wake up right now. And, mm-hmm. like, what color tie do you wear? Was, that's when my best friend. Yeah. They got married. Okay. So. <laughs> Happily ever after. All right. <laughs> of course they did. <laughs> um, yeah. So, anything else you want to add on, on company culture or? Um, Sandra Bullet movies or? I'm good. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm sure that as soon as you stop recording, I'm going to think, oh my God, this is yeah, great. Yeah. Should have said that. And then I'll have it for next. Um. Yeah, so I look forward to being able to employ people. I do not look forward to having to deal with the people I employ, if that makes any sense. Like, I, I, I love talking. One of the, my favorite parts about my job is being able to go out and network and learning the stories behind the people that I'm meeting. You know, like, they're in professional positions, but I don't want to just know what you do or who you work for. I want to know, who, who are you? What are you doing in your free time? What are, what are you into? Well, um, and So that's the most fun that I get. It's like I'm interviewing people for a biography I'm writing about, you know, so. Well, and that's important, and you're wise to do that because you can try people on, see if they fit. And oh, they yeah. And throw yeah, them yeah. back if they don't. Yeah. It was on the, the Trump 45. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's what I like about doing the 1099s, the contract work, yeah. is that if it's not working out, you go your way, I go my way, we're all good. Yeah. Also, working with an HR professional is not a bad idea. They have companies that are super cheap that will take care of all of your Absolutely. HR stuff for you, keep you compliant. It's awesome. Or work with you to help you develop your company culture and then work with you in helping to integrate that with your employees and getting to know each other. But if you start it from the ground floor up. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Get it, get it started early. Well, Don't and, wait and, until everybody's been working there for five years and they're miserable. And then you're like, hey, everybody, we're changing stuff around here. Soccer Tuesday. Yeah, Soccer Tuesday. <laughs> Foosball tables in the back. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, that's another, that's a topic for another uh, episode. But company culture is also important to your clients and your customers because they want to know that you have a healthy working environment. They like to know, so this comes back to social, they want to know what's going on behind the scenes. They want to see the fun. They want to know that Whoop. their product was made with love. Yeah, that, <laughs> that yeah, that's true. Uh also, they just don't want to do business with anybody that seems like they're being miserable. You know what I mean? Like, I went to register my vehicle uh, last week, and everybody at the revenue office was just, I mean, it's, it's you've seen Zootopia? Mm-hmm. You know, the sloth? So that's what it was, man. It was exactly like that. And, and I was like, oh, my God, these people are said, you go to Benton, miserable. They're happy. Yeah? Benton, Benton, Benton DMV, they're happy. All right. We've got, 
guys, you got to register your car and go to bid because <laughs> they have a happy DMV. It's going to be a surprise. Uh, so, yeah, like, I, I don't know. If I step into a place and I feel like, you know, people really don't even want to be there mm -hmm. to sell me the thing that I'm trying to buy from and them. And you can tell before they even speak. Yeah. Well, it tells me a lot. If, like, they're making they're making commission off of this sale that, that you know, of this thing they're trying to sell, and they're not even in, very enthusiastic about it, right. I'm not going through with it. Right. Yeah, I'm not doing it. So, yeah, it's a huge part. Making happy employees, happy business. Mm hmm yeah. And everyone's healthy. Everybody's healthy. There you <laughs> go. Circle the R back around. All right, guys. Well, if you are watching this as a video on YouTube, then you will be able to listen to us also on all of the uh, platforms that have podcast streaming. So Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Uh, and if you are an audio listener, make sure you go over to YouTube and see our faces. Faces. Happy faces. Happy faces, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, somebody asked uh, on Facebook, somebody, I saw somebody put a message out and they were like, who has a podcast? And so, you know, I listed mine among dozens of others and the person commented on the bottom, this one's my favorite. So I was like, okay, we're doing something right. We, we stand out out of, <laughs> out of dozens of other podcasts. So that's good. Uh, starting to pick up on a lot more listeners. Oh, and I heard, so I've been watching a lot of uh, videos on podcasting, mm -hmm. right? So I always like to keep up with that. I listened to them myself, and they said, don't really expect to have a big audience until after your 30th episode. 30 seems to be the magic number. Okay. Once you have 30 episodes out, then, like, you have enough content on the Internet that's circulating, and, like, some subject is going to hit somebody, and okay. it's going to just sort of grow like that. So Ooh, we're, 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 we're thriving for 30, so mm -hmm. this is our 11th. So we're, <laughs> almost, we're almost halfway there. <laughs> Very exciting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, well, uh, thank you guys for listening. And of course, we have some interviews and th fun things to, uh, coming up and little differences. We're going to go try to get on the roof and take some photos now. Fingers crossed. <laughs> right, fingers <laughs> crossed. Uh, and you want to say bye? Bye. Bye. Until next time, keep your business healthy.